Hello and welcome to today's video. I hope you were expecting me to come out of that door. I decided to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> so stupid. So in today's video, we're going to be speaking about the Nikon Z6 and why it is the best camera I have ever owned. So we don't need any more of an intro than that. Let's just jump straight in to today's video. Let's go. <laughs> right, you join me behind York Minster and this building often makes an appearance in any of my productions because it is just a great looking building. And what we're gonna be speaking about now is quickly the body of the camera. There's not much really to say. It feels well built, really sturdy. The buttons are perfectly placed very easy to use one-handed when I've got like my eye to the viewfinder I can quickly navigate the menus with my other hand the nipple is really good to change the focusing of the camera and put my auto focusing points where I need them it would have been nice if Nikon introduced touchscreen focus so I could drag my focusing points but I'll probably do that in future editions but overall the ergonomics the body of the camera are fantastic and feel great next point let's go <sighs> And the next part we're going to speak about is some of the specs of the camera. I'm going to quickly run through these, but I'm going to quickly show you. This is probably really suicidal what I'm doing. Hello. And uh, yeah, I've got to be careful. Uh, there's a bit of a drop and I don't want to drop it. The Nikon Z6. I'll just wait. So if I remember off the top of my head, the Nikon Z6 has a 24.5 full frame CMOS sensor. It also has 273 auto focusing point with eye detection, which should really be called eyelash detect focus, because if you're trying to do a close up of a subject, it will most likely focus on the eyelash. And this doesn't seem to be something that will go away with the Nikon Z6, as if it was fixable, I think they would have done it with a firmware update. But I think the Z50 from some reports has actually improved on that a lot more. So hopefully it's going to be a great system for the future. And Nikon have already made some good steps towards that. It's got a 3.2 million dot touchscreen and the EVF, EVF, so I can't wait to speak about that, has 2.1 million dots, so it's really high in quality, in uh, resolution, so it's very well detailed and absolutely fantastic. It uses XQD cards, which are quite expensive still, cost you about 200 pounds for a 128 gig one, but when more cameras start using them, they will become cheaper, but they are great, they are fast, and they are quite reliable. The Nikon Z6 does have one card slot, but I don't think that should really bother you. If it does, this isn't the camera for you. Now, the surprise for everyone with the Nikon Z6 was video functionality and video features. Nikon, three years ago, were the laughing stock, really, of video. Now, Nikon have a full-time focusing system, which I have used on many different productions, including music videos, I've used it in my vlogs, I've used it in so many different projects, and in the future, I'm going to continue to use it a lot more. Right now, it obviously doesn't have a flippy out tilty screen, but I can t I've got trust that the camera will be keeping me in focus because it's just that much of a reliable system. If I step away, it will probably get the background nicely in focus step forward it will probably get me back in focus just very quickly and these settings are obviously all customizable it's a fantastic system but another one that i think will make this camera which is the most amazing thing the best mirrorless camera on the market for video right now is the introduction of their raw video now i haven't been able to get my hands on it but it's something i'm hopefully going to save for for the future because it will do 422 12-bit pro res raw video there's only another camera in the whole market right now, and that's a DSLR made by the Canon. It's the new one, the Mark III. That will do raw video, but this one will do it for £3,000 or something less. That is absolutely fantastic to think that Nikon a few years ago were nowhere near the video game. They couldn't do it or anything. Now, they have got a perfect solution. They have got a perfect entry for people who are enthusiasts who want to push it further. So, there's some of the specs of Nikon Z6. Next! So the next one is why did I choose the Nikon Z6 and why did I move away from DSLR cameras? Well... Hello. Do you not like the Sony user? You, are you a Nikon user? Well, no need to have put the back. I'm just going to probably leave you to it. Oh, you got some at least. Whoa. Right, so there are a lot of reasons I moved away from DSLR cameras. Now, one of the things I'll speak about quickly is the EVF on this camera as well. So moving to an EVF, I was really excited because people said they just help you become a better photographer. It doesn't mean you're going to be a better photographer because of it, but if you know how to use the system, you're going to get better photographs because I can get my photos so close in camera that when I get to post, I could put my desired lock on them. And there were other reasons why I wanted to move away from DSLR cameras. Now, the D7500 was a very good camera, but 
it felt like a one trick pony. After the 8 frames per second, there was really nothing else the camera could do. It was able to do a lot of great stuff with photography. I could do anything. In terms of photography, I can nearly do exactly what I was doing with the Nikon Z7500 as I am doing with the Nikon Z6. I feel like because I've got the EVF, I could push photos a lot further in post. I can get my desired look and I've just been really trial and error now with photography and trying new things and a lot of people are really enjoying it and it's just given me the confidence to grow and gain more experience with videoing and photography and that was what I was hoping to do was learn a lot more with this camera. Of course another one as well is the video features. Now I wanted to push video a lot and I mean a lot but the D7500 and Nikon DSLRs were not giving me that option and this was the perfect alternative. People ask me why did I not move to Sony, but the reason I didn't move to Sony is because I still have lenses for the Nikon Z6 and with the adapter, you can use them. And that's a great advantage as well, is that any old cameras or any old lenses you have are not going to waste. I feel like the Nikon Z6 has helped me push, become a better photographer and do better video work. A few months ago, I wasn't even doing any of these videos because I couldn't do it with the Nikon D7500 at all. But now, I feel like I've got a lot more confident, I can co continue to make new videos, and I thought I want to let people know why this is a good camera. The Nikon Z6 as well just offers me the opportunities to be creative. I just invested as well with the Ronin SC for this camera and putting those two together are fantastic. I'm able to rely on the video focus. The video focus is fantastic. The video and the flat video is fantastic to color grade. There's a, either it will be out or it will be coming out. There is a video about color grading. So hopefully if you want to check that out and want to learn how I color grade and stuff like that, this might be a very helpful video to you. There's probably a lot more I haven't said in this segment of the video about how great the Nikon Z6 is, why I wanted to push for it and why I wanted it. And I'm so glad I'm got it and if you get this camera you'll definitely be happy with the results and now we're going to speak about a few of the things I hope Nikon will introduce in the future so let's go right so there are a few little disadvantages with the Nikon Z6 now I was hoping at this point that companies like Sigma after being out since 2018 would have made some native glass for the Z series but they haven't as of yet now I'm hoping that they will do that because one lens I would love to see on the Nikon Z6 is a 24 to 35 f2 lens which is the equivalent of the full frame version of the 18 to 35 f1.8 now I love that lens because it was cinematic it was sharp and gave me a great look to my visuals so overall I don't really have many negative things to say about the Nikon Z6 itself at first I was worried weirdly enough about not having a mirror to protect the sensor because I was worried that dust would get in there but I've been really cautious when changing lenses and I've not had touch wood any dust on the sensor don't be worried as long as you're safe you'll be fine and this quickly brings me on to the lenses of this camera now I've mentioned that the F to Z adapter works really well with photography it's really sharp I've actually got a 150 to 600 millimeter Sigma contemporary lens and it's fantastically sharp and beautiful I've been able to get some absolutely fantastic photos of red deers other wildlife and I've even been able to use the F to Z adapter a Sigma 1.4 teleconverter and then the lens itself with the focusing staying very quick, very fast. It's probably a little bit slower than native glass but I haven't been able to notice too much of a difference and all the focusing features still work. You don't really lose anything when you adapt your glass. The other lens I use is a 51.8 which is often the lens I'm using if I'm not using the 24 to 70 but that's a great lens to adapt if you're doing weddings and is a very superb sharp lens and great with the Z6 again. The 24 to 70 kit lens is a really nice lens. Now I think this is a really nice entry lens for people going into the mirrorless system. I used to always use an 18 to 35 so really never had the zoom range so it's really nice now to have that zoom zoom range and it kind of gave me experience of what I was missing. So the standard lens on a Nikon Z6 I think is really good. It didn't really rival some of the Canon glass that has come out but it's still a really good entry lens. I'm going to say it's also probably the best kit lens that Nikon have made for a camera. Now one concern I do have with adapting glass is video. Now 
Photography, you're going to be absolutely fine. But if you are adapting glass and you want to do video with it, then there is a grinding noise when your camera is trying to focus. Here's probably an example right now. Now, as well as the grinding noises, there is also a second problem, and that's sometimes video focus. On native... So rude. Now, this grinding issue or this motor sound issue is very off-putting when you're trying to record audio as well because if you're trying to record audio straight on top of the camera and you've got this grinding noise the mic which is right here on top of the hot shoe mount is going to immediately hear that and it's going to ruin dialogue if you're filming scenes so if you want to do that it might be good to go to manual focus or try and have the mic on a boom pole and away from camera and try and make sure that the sound isn't getting picked up now video focus is a little bit iffy sometimes i sometimes it's missed focus a little bit more but it's still a quite a good system but just be careful using it in case your video is out of focus and you don't want to lose shots because well your video is out of focus now from the lenses i have it does make this noise but i think it's the same pretty much across all lenses including tamron and sigma hopefully in the future with nikon making more and more glass for this z series it's not going to become a problem because people are going to move to native glass but it's just something to bear in mind if you have got a ton of Nikon glass and you want to adapt it and you want to do video and you want to do vlogging and you have a mic on top. It's not going to work effectively. However, apart from that, I don't have any issues with Nikon Z6 and it's an absolutely fantastic camera. So let's move on to our next point, which is... <laughs> Right, so the Nikon Z6 I think is one of the best mirrorless cameras on the market right now and I am so happy with my investment to look into a mirrorless camera. I did a lot of research beforehand, I had many concerns but as soon as I started using it I knew I had made the right choice. I have been able to do so much with the Nikon Z6 if I've got an idea of photography. I know I can do it with ease and I know I can do it successfully and be happy with the job I've done. If I want to do a video, then I know I could just pick up my camera and go. And if you're looking at doing filmmaking, it's a great choice and definitely something to consider, especially now when you've got raw video. And usually if you want to do raw video, you have to spend so much, thousands upon thousands upon, maybe tens of thousands of pounds to do raw video. This altogether will maybe cost you about £3,500 which sounds like a lot but if you're investing for the future and you want to make your own production company it's a great entry point into that and I think overall if someone said to me would I recommend the Nikon Z6 yes I would and it's been the best camera I've ever owned and can't wait to keep pushing the content I am making at the moment with this camera and can't wait to see what Nikon can do for the future so there you go that has been today's video I hope you have enjoyed it there is so much to speak about with the Nikon Z6 that I could have continued and continued to speak and there are probably points when I get to the editing I'll be like, should have said this, should have said that, but there was just so much positivity with this camera. It was a big gamble for me to invest into mirrorless cameras, to move to Nikon Z6, but it all paid off. And if you are looking at getting the Nikon Z6 or going mirrorless and you have any questions then please drop them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. I'd like to say again thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope it has been helpful to you and until next time take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>